self-translated queer consciousness, delayed intellectual traffic, and the constitution of the digital subject, French Anglo queer theory. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Technology Philosophy. Today I'm going to address a philosophical topic of ongoing innovation and progress, queer theory. Connecting technology philosophy to material from the Translating Queerly workshop held at King's College London on September 28, 2013. Queer theory is interesting in and of itself as a contemporary movement in sexuality studies, social justice, and political liberation, and also as technology philosophers, we are quite interested in identifying and understanding innovations in philosophical thought as an important marker of human progress and as a tool that we can apply in our own philosophical thinking about technology and biotechnology. Queer theory is situated in the long chain of social equality movements more broadly, with historical lineage in decolonialism and feminism, and extensions into current areas of rights agitation such as transgenderism and polyamory. Today's commentary is split into three parts. First, looking at overall themes taken up at the Translating Queerly workshop, second, enumerating key texts discussed at the workshop, and third, looking at important themes from the keynote talk by French queer theorist Maxime Servol. My endeavor here is to knit together some of the overall themes of the workshop, which in this short list is necessarily omitting and misconstruing things. The main theme was the history and development of queer theory considered from the standpoint of cultural transfer, importation, exportation, translation, psychoanalysis, and identity and the construction of the subject, and the role of the text. The queer movement has developed differently in France than in Britain and America. In France, gay or queer is more likely to be seen as a leftist political and social movement associated with political groups like FAR, the Homosexual Front for Revo Revolutionary Action, France, uh, Le France Homosexuel d'Action Revolutionnaire, and Le Trans Pédiguine Rouge, another party. Whereas in the U.S. and the Anglo world, queen, queer has been seen as an intellectual concept manufactured in academia and is associated with dense writing. The paths of including sexuality in broader political discourse have been different too. In France, the progression was promulgating the gay agenda through feminism through sexuality into political discourse, whereas in the U.S., gay reached political discourse more successfully framed as a social justice and equality issue. Publishing also played a role, advancing queer agendas more quickly in the UK through non-university press to reach a wider, wider audience. In some ways in France, there was a resistance to globalization and Americanization with a refusal to import and translate the Americanized term queer in favor of the term gay, and more recently, trans pédiguine a positively connotated compound word of transsexual faggot and dyke. Another force at work in France was containment politics, an institutional approach to prevent the widespread introduction of queer theory with claims of lack of rigor and appropriateness for consideration as an academic topic. On the flip side, there was a movement of French thought into American in the import of Derrida and Lacan into Butler and Sedgwick, eventually manufacturing other distinctly American concepts like anti-normativity. To characterize it generally, the intellectual traffic between France and the U.S. was delayed, interrupted, and refactored, returning belatedly inscribed in different political, social, and economic eras with new social and political agendas and cultural meanings. For example, Butler is now accepted as a Lacanian after 10 years of fisticuffs with Zizek over sexual differences, Derrida calling out ethnocentrism way before its presence was reliably articulated in the U.S., and we might still be waiting, and French thinkers are starting to pick up more of the importance of intersubjectivity coming from Sedgwick. Intersubjectivity meaning the psychological relation between people, essentially that man is a social being, not a solipsist. Another shift is in the theme of identity, identity politics, and identitarianism, where now queer is supposed to be an identity in a way that was not the case even 10 years ago. 
A funny paradox exists that on the one hand, we are exhorted to see any text free of the name of the author, while on the other hand, what kind of voice is speaking, and that it is a voice of non-dominative diversity, has become critically important in a quickly internationalizing world. Another theme is the queer theory movement's pains to articulate roots and history, a coherent queer theory history, including possibly having a situated role for Foucault as a key thought leader of the movement. The relationship is symbiotic, as it can be argued that queer politics has reinvented Foucault and is now incorporating Foucault in political activism, putting his critical theory and analysis into practice. In fact, Foucault's thought is very broadly applicable as we consider the micro-relations of power in any relationship or society and how we continually self-construct ourselves as subjects influenced by both top-down micropower and bottom-up disciplinary power. And it is nice to see an implementation of Foucault in queer theory, social theory, and political agendas. Likewise, the role the text film or literature or other forms of the text is important in, further, in furthering equality projects and agendas. Different kinds of texts have different effects, texts ranging from immutable, sacred texts like the Bible to interactive living texts that are engaged with, act, with actively and continually being collectively rewritten. Another theme is the linking of social relations issues like race, class, sexuality, gender, and so on with worldwide trends like globalization, capitalism, securitization, counterterrorism, and nationalism, and in the, as in the work of Pouar, Malibu, and others. A final theme that arises is the lineage of queer theory extending from feminism, materialism, cultural materialism where a core topic remains the articulation of subjectivity and material conditions. Second, now having discussed the main themes of the Translating Queerly workshop, I'm going to mention some of the most referred authors and thinkers in the discussion. It is important to cite the thinkers since queer theory is a highly embedded field within thought disciplines and has its own lineage and links to many other fields. Further, since the ambit of the workshop's project is connecting queer theory studies in France, the US, and the UK, it is useful to identify the body of thinkers and texts that is shaping contemporary queer theory. In a separate episode of Technology Philosophy, I provide a summary of the authors and their key works. Here, I will simply list the names of the thinkers. The authors most referenced at the workshop were attendees and speakers, Maxime Servaux, Hector Collius, Oliver Davis, and Nick Reeve Roberts, Thought Cornerstones, Michel Foucault, Jacques Derrida, Helen Sizu, Judith Butler, Eve Sedgwick, Monique Vitig, Christine Delphi, and Jasper Pouar. Filmmakers Jean Genet and Derek Jarman were mentioned, and by era from the 1970s is Guy Okinem, Jeffrey Weeks, and Raymond Williams from the 1990s, David Halperin, Stuart Hall, Leo Bersani, Alan Sinfield, and Jonathan Dollimore, and from the 2000s, Didier Eribon, Dennis Proventure, Marie-Hélène Bourstier, and Lee Edelman. Third, having looked at the main themes of the Translating Queerly workshop, and the list of some of the thinkers that are shaping contemporary French and American queer theory thought. The third topic is points brought up in the keynote discussion by French queer theorist Maxime Servol. Servol is currently at Université Paris 8 and gave a talk entitled The Recalcitrant Translator, which focused on many interesting literal and metaphorical issues in translation related to queer consciousness. Servol sees the role of the translator as providing a critical voice in the mediating process of the translation of words, language, cultures, and intellectualities. One of the first things to notice is that the subject is constituted by language, by the phoneme, syntax, and words. 
Social identity has linguistic vulnerability. The minority is particularly vulnerable to being constituated by the language of the majority, and the minority can be understood to be quite broad in that it can be anyone at the margin of cultural representation, anyone finding themselves strangers to their own language with regard to their existence and aspirations, which could be any of us at any moment. Other thinkers have called our attention to the power of language in self-constitution. There is Fanon's alienation, repackaging and re-alienation of the subject through language. There is Derrida declaring that he must speak in a language that is not his own because that will be more just. In addition to understanding the power of language in constituting the subject, a second point is the necessity for the queer subject to translate him or herself in a language other than Mallarmean-like, the maternal language, the language one speaks habitually by first inclination. The minority subject, constituted as discussed through language and other external factors, is necessarily caught up in a paradox, the paradox of speaking without being understood or of being represented inaccurately unless undertaking the task of self-translation. The formulation of a minority consciousness, then, for Serval, resides in the resolution of this paradox, in using translation to resolve the conflict of either failing to be understood or in being misunderstood. The distinction is between translation en soi and translation pour soi, that is, being translated versus translating yourself. The minority translator has three movements. First, in recognizing one's interior otherness in order for a minority consciousness to appear. Second, reversing the passive translation one was subjected to into an active one. And third, incorporating this queer consciousness into language. Serval uses the expression, it takes one to know one, in the sense that it takes one, a person who is queer, to develop the queer consciousness and then to translate it. Conclusion. In summary, this commentary has revived the overall themes taken up at the Translating Queerly workshop held at King's College London in September 2013. The queer movement has been developing differently in France, Britain, and America, where it is more likely to be seen as a leftist political and social movement in France and as an academic movement in the U.S. Intellectual traffic between countries has been delayed by resistance and agendas and comes back belatedly like a game of telephone with meanings changed and reinscribed in new political, social, and economic eras. The keynote talk featured French queer theorist Maxime Servol and his recalcitrant translator, where he understands the power of language in constituting the subject and that queer consciousness arises in a process of self-translation to render oneself understood. Queer theory connects to technology philosophy at two levels, the general level of the discipline of philosophy and the specifics of content. First, in the general discipline of philosophy, both queer theory and technology philosophy are areas of innovation in philosophical thought, and in thinking innovatively as technology philosophers, we want to track, understand, and incorporate innovative philosophical thinking, in this case from the progression of equality philosophies of decolonialism, feminism, queer theory, transgender, and polyamory. Second, the content of queer theory is of interest in technology philosophy. Some of the relevant topics include equality philosophies potentially deployed in a world with a variety of human and non-human intelligences, the emergence of consciousness in a process of awareness, alterity, and translation, which could relate to the waking up of new forms of consciousness, and the enlargening understanding of how we are constituted and constitute ourselves as subjects, and how this might change in the future as we have even more interior volition and self-direction capability and at the same time, greater competition amongst external influences on the constitution of ourselves as digital subjects with partial or full mind file upload, where the term subject, currently denoting nicely packaged individual consciousnesses in bodies, 
could become obsolete. Thank you. Please join me for another episode of Technology Philosophy.